I sleep strangely that night. I have a dream. It isn't like the rest at all. It isn't blackness and whiteness and silence like it usually is. Somewhere in my mind, there's a pulse, a vibration. It's something I can't describe. Like the words needed are just out of my reach, coursing through the building emptiness of my mind. It's familiar and comforting. But just as I'm about to remember, just as I'm about to know what those words are, I wake up. Blinking slowly, my neck muscles strain as I look around the white box. Everything is the same, of course, and yet something feels amiss. Slowly shaking out the thick pastiness of sleep in my eyes and legs, I stand and walk around the white box. My name is still in the corner, I memorize it again quickly, and it's still twelve steps from the cot to the wall. Then what's wrong? I blink again. Then it hits me. The lights don't hurt my eyes anymore. In wonder, I step backward and my hoof kicks into something. A tray. My stomach growls for the first time in ages as I admire the plastic wrapped contents. I forgot what it feels like to be hungry. Gently picking up the tray with my teeth, I take the food to my cot and relish every bite. I finish eating, just as there's a familiar sound of bolts from that corner again. Pushing my tray off the bed, I sit patiently and wait for the guard. But as he's about to slip the metal cuffs around my hooves, a voice interrupts him. Excuse me, I don't think that's going to be necessary, thank you. Says Twilight Sparkle as she enters the white box. The guard looks like he's going to give a retort, his eyes switching between myself and Twilight Sparkle. But instead, he shrugs, puts the cuffs away, and sips out of the white box. As the strange pony sits down on the ground and begins preparing her things, I look at her questioningly. What was that for? I ask her, uncertain. Well, to be honest, Canvas, I don't think you're a dangerous pony. I think you're just confused, and treating you like a criminal isn't the right thing to do. But I am a criminal. A flicker of doubt crosses the pony's eyes. A second later, it's gone, and I wonder if I just imagined it. After all, the lights are different now, and everything feels unfamiliar. I mentioned this to her. Yes, I asked the guards to lower the amount of light in your room when you complained to me last time. Is it better now? I nod, and she seems pleased with herself. She puts her quill to the board again. Now then, Canvas, what would you like to talk about today? That's a strange question. Up until now, she had been the one leading the conversations. I just followed along. And yet, without thinking, I know what I want to talk about. This pony has stirred something in my brain. Miss Twilight Sparkle, I had a dream when I slept. Is that so? Would you like to tell me about it? Yes. It was like the rest at first. There was white and black everywhere. It was very quiet, like it always is. But then I... saw something. Something in my dream that I can't explain. I'm sorry as I try to think of the right words to say. Then they come to me. Miss Twilight Sparkle, what is purple? The pony puts her quill and clipboard down and gives me a long, confused stare. I try to explain. Last time you were here, you said you were purple. What does that mean? The pony stutters, scratching her head. It's confusing to see this pony that seems to know so many things at a loss for words. Purple? Well, purple is a color. It's caused by light reflecting back into your eyes. Everything has a color. I'll give her a blank look. A color is something that isn't white or black. It can be green or blue or pink. It's... 
It's a part of what something is. I don't know how to explain it. I'm starting to get a headache. Something that isn't white or black? Colors? Green? Blue? Pink? I don't know what any of those words mean at all. And the pony doesn't know how to explain it. I'm only slightly in pain as things feel like they're moving in my skull. She points at her own fur. Can we both agree that this is purple? The fact that my fur is not white and looks like this is color. And this color is purple. Her words become more distant and indistinct, and I can't pick them out. I stare at her fur as my headache gets worse and worse and becomes some furious throb that threatens to split my skull. Her fur seems to expand and shimmer and pulsate through the room and my head. The feeling of something massive and powerful courses beneath my skin. Like there's some static power that's making my fur stand on end. Mystery and magic and things unexplained start flitting through my mind. Words that I don't understand. Things that scare me. Noises that are so loud that I fear I might go deaf. I can't breathe. I can't move. And this color, this purple leaps through the pony's fur into my eyes. I feel pressure building in my throat, so powerful that it's impossible to ignore. Everything slides back into focus as I really see it and speak without thinking. Purple. The color is purple. It's the incomprehensible, the magic, and the beauty. Deep things that mean nothing to us, which cannot be explained. Purple. Twilight Sparkle doesn't say anything. She's quiet for a very long time, simply staring into my eyes. I'm afraid she's going to be angry, as she's going to call the cards and have them hit me. I don't know why, but instead, she nods slowly. Yes, Canvas. Purple. I think you understand. She says softly. As if snapping out of a trance, Twilight Sparkle shakes her head, scribbles a few things onto her clipboard, and then slides it back into her bag. You are a very interesting pony, Canvas. You have something I can't exactly describe. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. Miss Twilight Sparkle, I croak hoarsely, suddenly exhausted as the pony stands. Can you teach me more colors? Like the ones you said? Green and blue? She gives me a kindly look with her perfect purple eyes and nods. It's only after she's gone that I realize I'm sweating profusely. My heart is pounding in my chest, and my hooves tremble something terrible as I try to stand up. I stumble to the corner of the white box and look down at the name scratched into the wall. Canvas. My name is Canvas, and I love the color purple. I wake up eagerly the next day, snatching the food that's sitting on the tray. I gobble it up quickly and push the rest away. Then I sit down on my cot and stare at that corner. And I wait. It isn't long before my ears rise to the sound of the bolts sliding open. In strolls the purple pony with a pleased look on her face. We talk for a long time about myself and colors, and she pulls something out of her saddlebag. It looks like a stone, but it shines like the lights that don't hurt my eyes anymore. She explains that it's called a sapphire, a gemstone, and that its color is blue. It's incredible to experience. Only recently, I didn't even know what a color was. And now here I am learning about two colors. Blue is almost like purple, but slightly different. It's something deep and powerful and mysterious, much like purple, but that coarse of static power that I had felt before isn't there. Instead, there's something quiet and peaceful that comes from the gemstone that makes my heart become slow and heavy. It's a sound completely unlike the silence on the white box. It's something glorious and ancient that fills my chest with majesty and megalithic size. It's a pulsing vibration that thrums my lungs with a graceful force and limitless compassion. Blue stays with me for a long time after the purple pony leaves. And so every day is like this. Wake, 
sleep, and await Twilight Sparkle's arrival. Each visit is new and magical. She brings me a small round object that looks nothing like I've seen before. She confuses me by saying that it's an orange, and that its color is orange. It takes me a while to grasp a concept, but I suppose that since colors are so beautiful, there's no harm in naming things after them. Orange is alive and full of zeal. It's boundless energy that makes me want to run around and yell at the top of my lungs. It's freedom. It's youth. The next day, she brings me something smooth and glossy, and Twilight Sparkle calls it an apple. Its color is red. Red is close to orange, like the past two colors were close to each other. But its energy is something deeper and more terrifying than orange. It has a malignant aura that can't be explained. It's life itself. It's turbulence and pain. It's fear and anger. It's pure existence with all its vitality and anguish. I like the color red, but at the same time, I'm deathly afraid of it. It has a strength and lustful allure that I dare not test. I learned so many things from Twilight Sparkle. Every day now has something new. It has a purpose. A purpose that isn't counting steps or sitting or eating. Now, every time Twilight Sparkle leaves with a white box, my heart is heavier and heavier all the while she's gone. But even then, I keep something that I didn't have before. I'm no longer just canvas. I'm canvas, and I have colors. My mind is fresh and alive, and I'm starting to hate white. Twilight Sparkle shows me a lemon, tells me that it's yellow, and its radiance is joy and contentment at being carefree. It feels warm and comfortable, casting a glow that the white lights never could. She shows me something called chocolate, which tastes so amazing that I ask to keep the bar. I eat it slowly over the days as I remember its color, brown. It's comfort and protection, strength and firmness. It's like a guard, but one that shelters and guides instead of hitting. She shows me a balloon, a mesmerizing translucent sphere that bobs and bounces so much like its color, pink. Pink is nothing short of fun and makes me smile. There's no seriousness or consequences. It's laughter and ecstasy, companionship and love. Some of the things that these colors make me feel don't make sense, but Twilight Sparkle always explains them to me. One day she brings me something that changes everything. It's flat and elaborate, and she tells me it's green. I fall in love with green. There's a clean, fresh smell sleeping inside the color. A boundless wisdom and perfection that none of the other colors have even come close to. A feeling of excellence and softness emanates from the regal color. Then Twilight Sparkle tells me that it's a leaf, and that it comes from a tree. I ask her to tell me about them. A tree is a sort of plant. It's like a tall, solid pillar with rough skin and thick branches that come off its sides. It stretches upward and the tips of its wood are covered in these leaves. Sometimes there aren't just leaves in the tree, though. There can be apples or oranges or even lemons. What about chocolate? Can trees have chocolate too? I ask excitedly. She laughs a beautiful, <laughs> scintillating laugh that feels like pink. Well, not exactly. There can be beans that make chocolate on trees, but not chocolate bars. That disappoints me slightly, but I still really like the idea of trees and all the colors that they contain. I ask her where one can find trees. She tells me that trees grow outside. I had heard Twilight Sparkle speak many times of outside. I don't know what it is though, only that it's where she comes from. I imagine it's a beautiful box that's covered with all these clothes that she has shown me. It'd be full of lemons and gemstones and balloons. I tell this to her, and she laughs again. 
No, that's not quite right either. Outside is in a box because it doesn't have walls or a ceiling. I thought I'd learned so much from this pony, but when she explains to me what outside is, I'm staggered. Cars had been one thing for sure, but no walls? No ceiling? That made no sense. Where would the cars go? Where would we write their name? What thought a pony where they could and couldn't go? I relay these queries to Twilight Sparkle. Thankfully, she's now quite good at explaining. Outside is nothing like the inside at all, Canvas. This here is inside. She elaborates, tapping a hoof on the floor of the white box. Outside is beyond these walls and floors. It isn't restricted or restrained. The only thing above any pony is a sky, and it's so high up that one never minds it. There are no walls except the ones we make ourselves. The outside has forests full of trees and oceans full of water and towns full of other ponies. A town? What's a town? A town is a place where many different ponies come and live together in houses. They have friends and family, they talk to each other, buying things, sharing things, having parties and working as one. There are many towns all over Equestria. Equestria is where we are now. It's where we live. Outside and inside is a part of Equestria. So, ponies live in houses. Are those like boxes too? Well, almost. They have a wall and a ceiling, but they usually have several colors and aren't always square. They're all different and they make up a town. I don't see why any pony would want to live inside a house when outside sounds so amazing. But what town do you come from? It's a small place called Ponyville. And you have friends there? Other ponies with colors? Yes. Tell me about them. And so she did. Each day now, instead of colors, Twilight Sparkle regales me with tales and stories of her friends and of their adventures and lessons together. She tells me about her little dragon named Spike, who's always there when she needs him. Scowling playfully, she tells me that sometimes he was rather lazy. But I don't understand why any pony could be lazy in a world where there's so many colors to see. She tells me about Fluttershy, a yellow, soft-spoken Pegasus pony who was friends with the animals and afraid of many things. Toy has to stop for a while to explain to me what animals are. There's also Rarity, a unicorn whose mane is a majestic purple, while her fur is an ugly white. It perplexes me how two opposite things could come together as such, and I tell this to Twilight. She warns me that if I ever meet Rarity, I should probably avoid repeating that. I really want to meet Pinkie Pie, with her gambits and games, after Twilight tells me about her. Funny how, like the orange, she too is exactly like the color she's named after, Pink. Twilight laughs as she recalls the parties that the lively pony would throw, and it made me crave for cake and music and confetti, even if I'm not completely sure what those are. Then I hear about Applejack, a hard-working orange farmer who has the most beautiful job of tending to the apple trees. She tells me that it's from her that she got in the apple. The thought of so many powerful plants together in an orchard gives me shivers. With all those trees and colors, she must surely be the most powerful and important mare in Ponyville. But then, she speaks with eyes wide of the amazing feats of the blue Pegasus pony Rainbow Dash. Her mane is not one color or two like the rest, explains Twilight Sparkle, but an entire spectrum of all the beautiful colors I had learned about. I want nothing more than to be able to see this pony, even if only once, just to see her mane, and to see the fabled sonic rainbow that Twilight Sparkles tells me of with such eagerness. Seeing the explosion of colors spread across the immense sky, I can't even begin to imagine it. These stories could last forever, and I wouldn't care. But these things come to an end. As Twilight finishes taking her notes one day, she stands and faces me, by the way, Canvas, I pulled up your file. I found out what it is you do, what your cutie mark means. I look back at my flank in contemplation. I had never understood what it meant myself. It's a little stick with a mane on it that's white. I don't like it at all. Not anymore. Canvas, you were an artist. A painter. She leaves me alone. I stare at my cutie mark and my flank 
and at the walls. A painter. That word means something to me, like my name. It means something like the colors mean something. I want to be outside more than ever now, to meet these ponies, to see the trees, to bask in the colors. But instead, I just sit where I am, on my cot, in the white box, inside.